A transformation T is defined by T of vector X equals matrix A times vector X. We are given matrix A as well as matrix A in row echelon form. Well first notice matrix A is a three by four matrix, which means a transformation T maps from R4 to R3. We're asked to find a basis for the kernel of the transformation T. The kernel of T is a set of all input vectors X in Rn, such that T of vector X equals a zero vector. The kernel of T is equivalent to the null space of matrix A. To find a basis for the kernel of T or the null space of A, we solve matrix A times vector X equals a zero vector. The vectors in the spanning set form a basis for the null space, as well as the kernel of T. And the number of free variables will indicate how many vectors are in a basis. So looking at the reduced form of matrix A, notice we have pivots in row one, column one, row two, column three, and row three, column four. And because we're mapping from R4 to R3, we know the input vectors have four components. Let's label the columns X1 through X4. Notice X2 is a free variable. Because we have one free variable, a basis for the kernel of T will have one vector, which we can see from the answer cell. And now let's write the corresponding equations for each row. And again, because we're looking for the kernel of the transformation, we will set each equation equal to zero. So the first row indicates that negative four x one plus two x two plus four x three minus one x four just minus x four equals zero. The second row indicates that x three plus two x four equals zero. The third row indicates four x four equals zero. And because x2 is a free variable, we have x2 equals x2. And looking at the third equation, we know that x4 is equal to zero. And if x4 is equal to zero, x3 plus two times zero equals zero, and therefore x3 equals zero. So if x4 and x3 both equal zero, notice for this first equation, we would have negative four x1 equals negative two x2. Again, four x three minus x four is zero. So all I did here was subtracted two x two on both sides. And then dividing both sides by negative four to solve for x one, we have x one equals one half x two. And of course, x two is still equal to x two. And let's parameterize the solution and let x two equal t. So now we know the input vector is x in our four that have an output of the zero vector would be in the form of x1, x2, x3, x4, where x1 would be one half t, x2 would be t, and x3 and x4 would both be zero. Factoring out the t, we have t times the vector one half, one, zero, zero. So now we have the information we need the vectors in the spanning set form a basis for the null space, as well as the kernel of t. Notice we have one vector in the spanning set, and therefore any scalar multiple of the vector one half one zero zero would be a basis for the kernel of t. Plus just let t equal one, and use the vector one half one zero zero for a basis for the kernel of t. We could also say the kernel of t, or the null space of a is equal to the span of the vector one half one zero zero, which means all the scalar multiples of this vector are the input vectors where t of vector x is equal to the zero vector. I hope you found this helpful.